And now we join Trev Lynham for Match of the Day. evening everybody what if that's the big story that we're asking this evening here on Trevor Sports unlike reality what if Liverpool had a full strength side what if they could challenge for the championship what if Manchester City weren't as consistent winning 20 games in a row well all your questions and more are about to be answered Chelsea versus Manchester United is our big game today. Manchester United are four points clear, but in the Trevor Sports Universe, Frank Lampard's Chelsea were up to disrupt their season. And we've got UEFA Champions League chasing Leicester City, who take on Arsenal at the King Power Stadium in a real battle of wits. We start at Stamford Bridge, where Manchester United travel to Chelsea. For the first time in a long time, as favourites, Manchester United four points clear of the Premier League as we hit the 12-game mark to go. Yet Chelsea have decided to keep Frank Lampard's and have been stuttering ever since. Their form at the moment is, is consisting of four draws and a defeat. So Manchester United definitely came to this as the form side. Your commentator for this one is Trev Motson. 12 games to go, United four points clear. Chelsea smarting from a 1-0 defeat last week. We want to put things right here against Manchester United who had a fantastic win of a uh, 5-0 last week against Newcastle United. But with Liverpool four points back and City a further point back, they can ill afford slip-ups here at Stamford Bridge this afternoon. The ground, which actually traditionally they don't actually do very well in. But Chelsea will want to hit back very well, Frank Lampard's men, after a defeat as a team to Mary's. And with the Champions League in mind, competition for places are certainly up for grabs. Abraham, Werner and Ziyech get the front three spots. Mount Canty and Jorginho in the midfield. And Mendy prefer to Kepa in goal. And it's the same back four as it always is here at Stamford Bridge. As for United, Martial on the bench. Martial is on the bench and... Ashwood, Cavani and Greenwood up front. And Pogba, McTominay and Bruno Fernandes get the midfield spots. This really is a big game for United win here. The gap could even go as far as seven points if results go their way. Defeat or a draw and the others win. Well, the gap could decrease. It's all up for grabs here. Here's short for United attacking the shed to the first half. And here's McTominay. They know the importance of three points here. Cavani, good turn, Cavani! Brilliant save from Mendy. Lovely football this from Manchester United. Ali Gunnar Solskjaer really has had them playing. I've commentated on them a few times this season. And they do look a good side, especially when they went to Anfield and won 5-2 back in January. United are still smarting from that uh, humiliating FA Cup penalty exit against Bristol City. We shall go down in uh, Travis Sports Fortwell here on match of the day. Greenwood to Cavani, who actually missed one of the penalties. And McTominay. Still Scotty McTominay, now Wan Basanka. McTominay again, a bit of space there to work into, and the shot just wide. Mendy was confident he was going wide, even though he had to dive away to his right just to make absolutely certain. Yeah, I think he was confident enough. Good effort from McTominay, though. Here's Victor Lindorov. Aaron Wambasanka plays in there towards Bruno Fernandes. Greenwood to McTominay. 20 minutes gone. It's all been Manchester United at the moment. That's a foul there by Tammy Abraham and Paul Pogba. 
Here's the referee, Andre Mariner. Already across there, the Birmingham based official. Just to say, come on, mate, that was a foul. I know Pop Barova does it a little bit with the uh, play acting, but uh, well, it was definitely a foul, son. And that's what he'll be saying to uh, Tommy Abrahams there. So a Manchester United three kick now. Well, Pogba floated in there. And winding up just on the edge of the D there. So I think a chipped three kick may be the possibility. Yeah, he's chipped it in there. It was just about from Cavani as well. Back to Pogba again. Laid it in there. Here's Rashford on the half volley. Deflects off the post. And Everton came in there, but Thiago got there first. And got it away for, for, to safety and away from danger for Chelsea. Pogba from... The pass there from uh, Cavani, the shot got a deflection from Rashford. And uh, as Cavani was closing in on the rebound, Thiago got there first. Now look short for United. Still short as well. Great ball if it can be reached and a good, uh, good flick away there by the Chelsea defender. McTominay's there, but so too is Werner. Now Abraham. Again, battles with Paul Bremen. <laughs> Almost trip each other up there. <laughs> Back to the silent movie days of the 1920s. Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy and all that lot. Cavani's shot hits Sumo and it's a corner. <laughs> and a little chuckle there at the two. Tammy Abraham and Paul Pogba uh, tripping over each other there. No, I think they're having a little running battle as uh, we see Cavani's shot get a deflection. So a corner then with 10 minutes to half time. Bruno Fernandes with the corner. In towards Pogba, headed away by Thiago. You get a good purchase on the head, in fact. Uh, Shaw now has it for United. They've certainly been the better team, they've settled the better. Here's uh, Shaw, and he's got Boone Chilwell to beat in front of him here. Shaw tries to go to the byline. Chilwell completely trips him up, but it's a three kick to Manchester United. Coming up to 10 minutes to half time, Andre Marino wants words with uh, Chilwell here. And just says, Come on, son. Let's just um, calm it down a little bit. It's a free kick. In fairness to Shaw, he was trying to stay on his feet and uh, I have to say that was good professionalism from Luke Shaw. Anyway, Bruno Fernandes is going to take the three kick. And uh, we know how good a delivery he can put in. Here's Shaw with the right footed delivery. In towards Rashford, who scores! What a big moment that is in the title race! Marcus Rashford has struck goal for Manchester United. The goalkeeper's got to be blamed, I think. There's the three kick. Goalkeeper thought about coming, didn't decide until it was too late. He was in two minds whether to stay on the line or come for the ball. And by the time he decided it was too late, Rashford got up above Thiago and heads Manchester United into a deserved lead on 36 minutes. Well, three minutes to half time and uh, well, Chelsea will feel... Very disappointed they haven't really performed here as the ball comes in there, comes off Linderoff and past the hair and behind for a corner. And it just uh, illustrates how Chelsea have been poor, but what poor Chelsea have been up until now. But having said all that, might, uh, that goal cons concession might just spur them in. Anyway, Akim Ziyech is going to take the uh, corner there first of the day. And it's come in the 43rd minute of the contest here it comes in there towards Abraham McGuire got ahead of her way but only as far as Kante United haven't cleared the danger initially here's Werner oh it's a super goal it's a super goal United have been put back and I suspect the celebrations will not be allowed here or just allowed here because they'll be absolutely buzzing not, in the, not just at the Etihad but at the Liverpool too I fancy as well Good news for Chelsea, good news for Manchester City and Liverpool. Not such good news here for Manchester United. McQuire didn't get the ball away quick, good enough there. Came to Kante, laid it into Werner on the edge of the penalty area. And his shot was so unerring. And De Gea, who hasn't had much to do, couldn't get there. And Manchester United have been pegged back, 1-1. And the plot in the title race, <laughs> dare I say, it thickens. This is some title race here, a three-way battle here with five points between them at the start. 
United were on course for all three until then. But here's Cavani and Nibiran. Oh, brilliant save with the near post by Mendy. You cannot take your eyes off this match for the second here as we go towards the last knock into the first half. But this is some this is some finish this to the first half. This I mean both teams now attacking from one end of the field to the other. Pogba went to stoppage time at the end of the first half. In towards Rashford. Well read by Rhys James. Here's Shaw. Goes down. Jorginho. Good enough. And now Chelsea comes sprouting forward now and there. Their hope will be the last attack of the first half. But Fernandez has taken the ball. Stolen it from him. Nicked it. Greenwood is in support. Fernandez has possession. Comes streaking forward here. Shaw, Cavani, Edison Cavani, oh what a save that is from Mendy and the whistle goes to half time, Marcus Rashford putting United ahead 10 minutes before half time but a minute of normal time to go when Werner equalises, we see the last play in the map of the first half, this was Cavani and a great save from Mendy, so half time here at Stamford Bridge, it's Chelsea 1, Manchester United 1. United attacking the Matthew Harding stand in the second half. We've had about a minute and a half. Named after the former Chelsea Cold chairman who sadly died in a helicopter crash in 1996. Anyway, here's Rashford to Shaw. Cavani waiting in the centre. That's Cavani on the bicycle kick and he almost executed it perfectly. But I think it was drifting a bit wider than it first may have worked on the, on the first angle. We've got a better view from behind the goal here. Yeah. It was drifting well wide, but it would have been some go if he'd have executed it perfectly, I must say. Anyway, Olivier Giroud has replaced Tammy Abraham, who's quite frankly been ineffective so far. United have certainly been dominating. They've had eight shots to Chelsea's two. One of them been on target for Chelsea, that was the equaliser. And United have had five on target, to one of which resulted in Rashford's opening goal with a bullet head in. This is the aforementioned Rashford against uh, Zuma. Just loses his balance, gets the cross in, and the referee is blown for a foul by Rashford. Well, I have to say, he got the ball there, and the yellow card has been brandished. Might be worth a look again. I think Andre Marinen may have got that wrong. He may have been the wrong side of it, to be fair, but can you tell me there whether that was a foul or not? I think he got the crossing perfectly. I think Rashford's a bit unfortunate there, to be fair. Joe up to Kante. 62 gone. Here's Giroud. Maguire stood his ground and uh, stood it very, very well. Greenwood. And I've got to say, Andre Marin has had a superb game as the referee. Apart from that one Rashford incident where he booked him for, for really nothing, he's had a super game. He's given the game every conceivable opportunity to flow. Here's Greenwood. Rashford is making a very good dart there against Reese James. And he's running for the ball there. And I think he's taken Reese James from behind. And if he has. Then Rashford could be in some real serious trouble. Remember, he's already been booked. Maybe Archie so he's got a second yellow. And it's a red card for Marcus Rashford. Another plot twist in the title race. Marcus Rashford has been shown the red card and has been sent off for foul and Reese James. And I have to say, he went in from behind. I don't think there was much doubt about that one. United down to 10 men. Given away to Fernandez. Here's Greenwood. And Bruno Fernandes with a 10 man. Oh, what a save! Mendy with a super save. I tell you what, Zuma there was careless. Straight to Bruno Fernandes. You don't want to be doing that. And then Fernandes gets it back from Greenwood. And Mendy coming up with the answer once again. Manchester United corner, 67 minutes gone. It's going to be Bruno. Will it be the long one or the shorter one to Paul Pogba? We're going to go short to Pogba. Cavani waits at the centre on with Green with this is towards Cavani, who's had a just goes wide. I tell you what, United are very unperturbed with the fact that they've gone down to 10 men at this point because still playing their good attacking brand of football. Cavani not far away. Putting their noses back in front in this one. We get to Chelsea, two minutes to go. That's Blaquetta on for Reese James. And Cavani replaced by Martial. 
And we're going to see a late twist. Danny Jones is on for Mason Greenwood. Here's Aspoliqueta, who's actually the real Chelsea club captain. Akim Ziyech. Mount to Aspoliqueta. Can Chelsea strike a late blow here in the title? Race here, they may be down in sixth place, but they'll have a big say in who wins this title anyway. Ball played in their furnace header. Well, it's wider the target in the end. The hair wasn't happy with some of the United defending. That's what Quetta did really well on that far side. Imagine a good cross in there. And uh, Werner got above Winder off there. That's a concern. We need to stop his time at the end. Can Chelsea perform? One last hurrah, maybe, for the blue half of Manchester and the red half of Liverpool. Here's Asper Quetta. We've played a minute and a half over the 90. The ball plays in there to one. Giroud! Oh, what a chance that was for Chelsea and Stamford Bridge. I think some of them 40 that got in. Asper Quetta has just come on as a sub. Plays a lovely ball in. And I tell you what, he's only inches away from making that absolute. And that would have really put Manchester United in big bother then. But they're going to drop two points, it seems like now. Unless uh, James can get on the end of this. And he can. Here's Fernandez. What about the shot? Then got it to Juan Basanka. He's lost possession. Kanti did really well. Gets the ball away and it's going to be a point apiece. So that'll be encouraging signs for well, Manchester United, Manchester City rather than Liverpool. United have dropped points, they led through Rashford's goal. Vernon and equalised just before half time. Rashford was then later sent off for two yellow cards. And United have dropped two points in their quest for the title. It's finished here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea won, Manchester United won. So Chelsea hang on for the draw and very nearly snatched a late winner. Oliver Giroud's header going just wide. Uh, we spoke to uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after the game and uh, absolutely admitted that his side should have won that game, perhaps 4 or 5 nil. And uh, Frank Lampard uh, definitely spoke to us and said that his side were lucky, but sometimes in football you need a bit of luck. Right, next for us on Match of the Day, we're off to the King Power Stadium. Leicester City had the most famous underdog story of all time in winning the Premier League. Arsenal, well, they've not won it since they went the entire season unbeaten. And there's a lot of turmoil going on at the moment in North London. Mikel Arteta took his stuttering Arsenal side to see if they regain their form against Leicester City. Whereas Brendan Rodgers... He's hoping for Leicester City to find UEFA Champions League football. And a win would go a long way to finding that out. Your commentator of this one is Trevor Davis. Oh, how the roles have reversed in the fortunes of Leicester City and Arsenal. One is chasing Champions League football. The other is chasing to be in the top half of the Premier League. There is still a fleet of names and lots of talent on show on both sides. Most notably, Arsenal signing Martin Odegaard, a long-fabled Real Madrid prodigy, playing for them today. But it's Leicester City that could come to this game in favourites. Brendan Rodgers' side has been in a fantastic vein of form, led by Jamie Vardy and James Madison, who start tonight, along with Harvey Barnes. Castagne is chosen at left-back tonight, and Soyan Chu is past fit. For Arsenal... Emil Smith Rowe and Martin Odegaard will partner Pierre Aubameyang in a front three. Granite Xhaka is preferred in midfield. Saka and Tierney both start down the left wing. We've had a lot of bad weather recently on uh, here in the Premier League. So it was nice to have a cold, but clear evening. His Barnes and Vardy. Good turn by Vardy. Great turn by Vardy. It was nearly a fantastic stop. Granite Xhaka across the clear and the save by Bert Leno. First touch for Odegaard. Hector Bellerin. Nearly a fine start that was. Jamie Vardy did really well to find the space. The shot was true, but he tried to pick out the far post and there was the goalkeeper. Bakayo Saka looking for Emil Smith Rowe. Teasing ball. Headed away by Ndidi. Odegaard, good touch. And a good hit. Schmeichel is there to respond. We've played three and a half minutes and both goalkeepers have been called into action. Is this an omen for the rest of the game? If so, yes, please. But that was a good stop. Thomas Partey. Smith Rowe. 
Crunching challenge by Barnes. And referee gives the foul. Soyuncu comes over to uh, make his point. Probably a fair enough decision in all fairness. So David Luiz, does he fancy a go on goal? Puts it in. Smith Rowe's head was on that, and in the end, nothing that's going to worry Kasper Schmeichel. Arsenal are pressing really well at the moment. Here is Smith Rowe. Seems to be the catalyst of sometimes their change in fortune. And Thomas Partey! Whoa, look at this. Picks the ball up. Has a crack after being played in. And he didn't miss by much. Unless they're getting a bit too clever. And are now bringing in Pierre Vamiang to come forward. Here's Bellerin. Odegaard. Good challenge. Soyuncu sliding in. Castagna lays it off. This is good football at the moment by Leicester. Madison, Tillemans needs options. And Madison finds Tillemans eventually. Justin. Tillemans again. Inside run being made by Barnes. Here he is. Justin. Crosses blocks by Bakayo Saka. So, Madison's corner. And uh, Smithrow takes it away. Here's Castagna. Tillemans. And Didi. Now Arsenal can come on the counter attack through Aubameyang. Now Xhaka, Bamiyang's continued to run forwards. Smithrow, Granite Xhaka. Great ball into Smithrow. That's a clever ball out to Bakayo Saka. And Smithrow is in space. And that's a good stop by Schmeichel. That's an excellent counter attack by Arsenal. Emile Smithrow found himself interchanging really nicely between Xhaka and Bakayo Saka. Threw on goal, tried to pick a spot, and Schmeichel there has made an excellent save. Jacker. Johnny Evans wins the ball back for Leicester. Tierney, Smith Rowe, Partey, Saka. Tierney arriving on left support. Saka has crossed it in. And the finish isn't by Aubameyang. Well, good work this is by Arsenal. Real flowing football. Saka does get the cross in right in the danger zone. But Aubameyang's finish is just not what was required. Over the bar it goes. Bellerin, all oh, just trying to squeeze that through ball through to Aubameyang. Vardy's got a bit of space. He's found Barnes. Ricardo Pereira. Vardy! Oh, it's off the woodwork! And it's somehow away. Well, this is extraordinary. Vardy got the header in. And that's a real dose of luck for uh, Leno. Arsenal have decided to make a change. Madison curls in the corner. tini has got it away. Here is Ricardo Pereira. He's lost it. Bakayo Saka over the top for Aubameyang who's got through oh so close well it was a lovely ball over the top Saka does so well to pick this through Evans goes for the aerobatic it fails and that's unlucky Party options through the middle and Smith Rowe. Now Martin Odegaard goes out wide to Bakayo Saka. 
does well to keep it in and then cross the ball and Aubameyang got there and Castagna's got to clear it and does Bellerin Arsenal turning up the pressure a little bit Caballos Thomas Partey Madison intercepts Barnes losing it to Saka he's having a very fine game on that left wing Smith throw into Aubameyang Schmeichel read it Son of the Great Dane does very well there. It's Harvey Barnes just turning and running and doing really well to get his uh, ball away. Vardy now up against Caballos. Still Jamie Vardy. Clever ball. Mark Albrighton. Good save. Burnt Leno. Barnes coming in. And it's foul at last. And Mark Albrighton scores for Leicester. And Leicester says he really have stepped it up in the second half. The first effort and the run by Vardy was to be commended. And Leno made a very good save. But Harvey Barnes following up. Not once but twice Albrighton was unmarked inside the Arsenal penalty area. And in terms of playing in the Champions League, how important of that header could that be? Brighton strikes, and it's 1-0 to Leicester City. Arsenal could come forward, Aubameyang, Smith Rowe, out wide to Saka. Oh! Over the top of Aubameyang. Another fine cross. Oh, down Arsenal's left flank today. Smith Rowe and Bakayo Saka and Tierney are the main creative outlet for them. Vardy, lovely little touch. And again, Vardy looking for Ricardo Pereira, who keeps it on play. Up against Smith Rowe. This is still Ricardo Pereira, who's away from Smith Rowe. Puts the cross in. Vardy is there! And then it is wide. The great work from Ricardo Pereira. Past Smith Rowe. Past Bakasaka. Left footed cross. And this time Vardy's missed. But it's top quality football from Leicester City. Starting to pass the ball with a lot more purpose. Really were second best in that first half to Arsenal. Now it's up for Arsenal to respond. Here's Nicola Pepe. Oh, into a get near post. He's brought down. And a penalty will be awarded. And is it for the challenge by Ndidi or by Schmeichel? <coughs> well, this is it. And I suspect it's the challenge by Schmeichel. Now Aubameyang is presented with the chance to bring Arsenal level. Saved! Oh, Schmeichel redeems himself. It was well read. It wasn't the best spot kick, but the goalkeeper did very well. Didn't his father once save a famous penalty against Arsenal? And with that, Leicester City. A huge three points for them. Leicester City move a step closer to Champions League football. Mark Albrighton's goal was the difference. Arsenal will rue their missed chances in the first half, no doubt about it. In the second half, Leicester took command of the game and have far more chances. And it was a great result for the Foxes who have beaten Arsenal this evening at the King Power Stadium by a goal to nil a great result for Leicester City a game just about par for the course Leicester proving that they could take their chances big problem that uh, Arsenal couldn't in that game Brendan Rodgers did say afterwards and I quote uh, bloody hell there you go that's his quote Right, uh, let's move on and let's give you the roundup of all the other games that took place yesterday and we start with Liverpool's trip to Sheffield United 
Liverpool United showed their class as they got back to winning ways against Sheffield United, but it wasn't the easiest of starts. An early fail by Virgil van Dijk meant an early penalty for Sheffield United. What resulted next changed the course of the whole contest. As many people have said, had Billy Sharper put the penalty away, Sheffield United may have been able to continue Liverpool's four form. But the save was made by Allison, and that just seemed to galvanise Liverpool. An excellent pass through by Thiago found Mohamed Salah to finish coolly and calmly and powering the ball home and to put Liverpool a goal up. Once Liverpool did get into the lead, it was only a matter of time before they could double their advantage. Alexander-Arnold's fantastic free kick floating over the wall and flying in, putting them two up. In the second half, the decisions were really were to go against Sheffield United. I would like to be a perfectly good opportunity, the referee fall back for a foul on Sadio Mane, much to the frustration, but replays showed that it was indeed a foul, Lundstrom catching Mane. Mo Salah, the penalty taker, has been impeccable this season for Liverpool, and it continued again, his left-footed strike, putting them two up. And Mohamed Salah was able to complete his hat-trick from the spot after Sadio Mane won another penalty. Charging into the area, this time it was Lundstrom and Egan getting involved again and the referee pointing to the spot for the third time in the match. Salah with the opportunity to complete his hat-trick and beat Aaron Ramsdale with absolute aplomb and Liverpool winners by four goals to nil. It's good that Liverpool have finally hit back their form after an indifferent start to 2020 but with Mo Salah getting the match ball on a hat-trick, Liverpool's championship challenge and the defence of their crown is very much back on. Manchester City played inform West Ham United at the Etihad and it was some delightful play in the end by Manchester City a brilliant pass by Kevin De Bruyne and great skill put in at the far post an opportunity for Aguero whose volley was wildly over but it was poor defending that led to West Ham's downfall in the end when they were able to con uh, concede the first goal love the interchange of passing put in as Aguero and he does not miss from there Sergio Aguero's fine finish and goal putting Manchester City 1-0 up. But West Ham United has showed they do have a bit about them and were able to win a free kick. Fernandinho found in Mikko Antonio as he charged forwards and then the game which would open up on that key decision. Referee gave the free kick, Aaron Cresswell scored it. A delightful effort, reminiscent of that of John Barnes against the Netherlands all those many years ago. Aaron Cresswell showing his wonderful form for the Hammers this season. And in the second half, West Ham started to create some good chances. Jesse Lingard's cross was met by Mikel Antonio diving, but it was just an inch wrong side of the post. A real let-off for Manchester City. And then Manchester City themselves tried to force a chance when Riyad Mahrez on his left foot just wasn't able to find the corner. West Ham also had one final chance to try and seal the match through when an opportunity fell to Thomas Suchek. This time though, Edison was equal to it. And there would be time for a couple of last moments in the Manchester City half. Benjamin Mendy playing across to Riyad Mahrez, who should have scored and perhaps produced one of the misses of the seasons. And then there was one final moment in which the entire match hinged on. Gabriel Jesus found Fernandinho. His left-footed effort was two inches wide of the post. Final kick of the match. It would have been cruel on West Ham to lose it, but Manchester City lose pace in the title champions challenge. Burnley went to Tottenham Hotspur knowing that it was a big chance for them to try and get a point as they looked to stay out of the relegation zone. And luck was in their way. Harry Kane's finishing was off on the day. His left foot to strike beating Nick Pope but beating the post also. Burnley themselves are actually able to play some good football when they're given the time to. This brilliant counter-attack eventually broke to Robbie Brady who saw the French goalkeeper off his line and with that Robbie Brady beautifully tripped Hugo Lloris to put Burnley 1-0 up definitely cause one of the goals of the day but Spurs were able to keep forcing their way forward and eventually did find chances Regulian on his right foot this time though just going wide of the post but in the end Burnley's famous away win wasn't to happen as Spurs were able to find an equaliser Regulian's cross there was a moment of hesitation in the area after a poor mistake by Nick Pope and that allowed Song Yong Min to toe poke the ball home and to bring Spurs level Replay showed that he just reacted quicker than anybody else, such as the form of the South Korean. And with that, the third minute of stoppage time, the point was salvaged for Spurs, and it was 1-0 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. West Bromwich Albion and Brighton was a proper relegation six-pointer, and Sam Allardyce's side got off to a fantastic start in what turned out to be one of the games of the day. The cross eventually found Matias Pereira, and he was able to go and put West Bromwich Albion 1-0 up. 
and West Brom play with a free-flowing football that they haven't done this season and capitalise on quite a few mistakes from the Brighton back line. Diania found himself through, Veltman came across to make the challenge and got it all wrong, suddenly Diania had the time to pick the ball back up and pretty much from the penalty spot was able to roll it past Jordan Steele and to put West Bromwich Albion 2 up. In the second half, it was more of the same for Sam Allardyce's side. Diania this time turning provider, putting it across all the way to Gallagher to finish with his left foot inside the 60-yard box and to make it 3-0. And then 3-0 up, West Bromwich Albion showed their nervousness, but they had a goalkeeper to thank for them on the day, Sam Johnston. A penalty though, there was nothing he could do about the decision, as clear a penalty as you'll see this season. And from the spot kit, Neil Malpai had the opportunity and duly dispatched the penalty home, sending Johnston the wrong way. This spurred Brighton to find themselves that point and that second goal. And eventually it arrived when Teo arrived on a looping header to head the ball in and to make the game 3-2. And there was drama to follow towards the end of it. Gross's free kick here was met by Danny Welbeck, who played in Neil Marpai, whose control was just there or thereabouts. His finish was well saved by Johnston in the near post. And there was time for one last bit of drama when Brighton tried to find an equaliser. Paul Gross's cross was met by Danny Welbeck. Basuma tried to curl the ball in on the volley. His effort went wide of the post. And of course was another game in which that was the final moment of the match. Brighton beaten and West Bromwich Albion are doing everything they can to avoid relegation under Sam Allardyce. Crystal Palace and Fulham were the other relegation six-pointer as Palace looked to try and avoid getting involved in it. But Fulham came out of the match very determined. Ruben Loftus Sheik's early effort just striking the post, showing the mentality of this Fulham side. And Scott Parker has definitely got Fulham playing some better football. Bobby Decker Corver Reed able to get the opening goal as Fulham scored a rare away goal. Crystal Palace though do have uh, an ace up their sleeve and that's Eze at the moment who's proven to be a real talent his left foot right footed shot just curling wide of the post but Eze responded with a beautiful free kick that brought Crystal Palace level and was a special moment for all those at Selhurst Park. Selhurst Park rocking somehow Scott Parker was able to turn things around in the second half and Fulham were able to go and win the match. Alexander Mitrovic, the former Newcastle United forward getting the decisive goal his finish was beautifully well paced and Fulham held on to Rin uh, for the, uh, a rare time um, away from home. 2-1 winners against Crystal Palace what wonders that'll do for their relegation scrap. Everton and Southampton well it was a game in which if Everton win they could continue their wonderful form their perfect record this season and it was nearly the perfect start after Dominic Calvert-Lewin's volley was wonderfully well saved but Hamas Rodriguez showed his quality his cross was beautifully placed and there always was Dominic Calvert-Lewin to head the ball home replay showed it was just a wonderful bit of skill by Hammers to put the cross on the plate of the centre forwards and that's great placement for a finish past Fraser Foster Everton continued to make chances and Tom Davis was back in the fray. He passed it across to Richarlison to slot the ball home and to put Everton 2-0 up, a lead they weren't to lose. Everton have won their last six games in the Premier League and are shooting up the table. Southampton, on the other hand, are starting to falter. Could they be in a relegation battle this season? Newcastle United are also a side in danger of slipping down the table. Wolves themselves haven't hit the heights of their previous season when they got European football, but they did show their quality this afternoon. Raul Jimenez getting on the end of a fantastic cross and heading Wolves ahead. 1-0 became 2 in the second half as Wolves played some excellent football. William Jose's beautiful through ball from Adama Traore, who was given far too much room in front of the Gallagher then went ahead and put Wolverhampton Wanderers 2 up. Questions being asked to Steve Bruce's Newcastle United. Are they in trouble? Well, Newcastle United did their best to respond, but another match in which the final kick of the action was settled by a chance. John Joe Shelby's effort ended up going wide if it was brilliantly headed away by Connor Cody. The captain celebrated that. A clean sheet will mean the world to him and Wolves winners. Leeds United hosted Aston Villa, two sides that have played some of the most attractive football in the Premier League this season. But it was defensive mistakes which ended up being costly. A brilliant bit of work here by Barkley, but you've got to question the marking allowing Ollie Watkins to slot the ball home. One of the easiest goals he will score for the former Brentford man. 
One became two and it settled the match in the end after a poor bit of defending. Mohamed Trezeguet was able to win the ball off Robin Cock. Referee seems none pleased by the Leeds protests. Trezeguet was through. A lovely cool finish over the top and 2-0 Aston Villa. Looks as if Leeds United will probably be safe this season playing with nine championship players. For Aston Villa they really are on the up and a great result for them. Match day 26 complete of the uh, Premier League. Uh, it's not long to go now. Uh, Chelsea holding Manchester United. So that brings the uh, lead down to just two points. After a great result by Liverpool winning 4-0 away at Sheffield United. Biggest uh, away win and overall win of the day. West Brom bring, bringing a huge battle against Brighton in that relegation six-pointer the bottom of the table it does bring West Brom out of the relegation zone and drops Sheffield United back in Fulham have picked up a bit of ground on United but Brighton still remain rooted to the bottom of the table reality Newcastle United Crystal Palace and Burnley potentially could find themselves in a relegation battle same could be said really for anybody at the moment in the uh, bottom half of the table and that includes Arsenal top half of the Premier League. Manchester United's league now is just two points. And they're starting to develop a gap between them and the rest of the challenges. Manchester City remain three points back but Manchester United and Manchester City will have to play each other the following Sunday so that could go a long way to proving the championship. Spurs go level with Leicester but Spurs have a better goal difference and for the first time this season Everton are ahead of Chelsea and are through to sixth place the most informed side in the Premier League and for uh, the first time Wolves are in the top half of the table. Well, for us, we're going to bring you Match Day 27 on a Premier League Sports Night special. We've got Liverpool-Chelsea, which is our main game, and all of the other midweek goals and highlights to look forward to. Match of the Day returns this time next week. Manchester Derby will be our main game, but also we'll be following the relegation battle. West Bromwich Albion taking Newcastle United. Could be a fantastic game, that. And don't worry, we're just less than a week and a half away from the return of the UEFA Champions League here on Sports Night. And we've got highlights of the three British sides, Liverpool's uh, home uh, tied to Borussia Dortmund. Lazio will host Chelsea, as will Krasendor host Manchester United. We'll also bring you all the goals from all the rest of the first 16 games. So join us on Tuesday the 9th of March. Well, there we go. It's been another wonderful week of football here in the Premier League. We're just 12 games to go in the season and we're starting to get to the business end of the FA Cup because in two weeks' time we will have the quarter-finals. The Champions League gets underway and we will have the draw uh, coming up in uh, two weeks' time for the uh, quarter-finals. And we'll see what all our English teams get through. And uh, the Premier League is all picking up. It really is the business end of the Championship. Or as a, a famous manager once called it, squeaky bum time. From all of us, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.